Well, good enough, there's uh, one group or company that is not thinking of a hike. That's Dangote. And we've heard uh, two days ago, they did announce that instead of 1,225 naira for a liter of diesel uh, supplied to local retailers, they would now do it at 1,000 naira. Uh, well, I guess uh, it's a thing of celebration. But let's find out if this is sustainable and how they are hoping to uh, ensure that the supply actually goes to every part and it's not being taken for granted. The director, group chief, a commercial officer of Dangote is here, Mr. Rabi Umar. Mr. Umar, good afternoon and thank you for your time. Good afternoon and it's a pleasure to be here. Great. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> you just heard the, the telecoms are trying to prepare our mind, I think, for a tariff hike. Uh, if you look at their side, I mean, you would say, of course, that uh, things, operation has become more expensive. So you expect it. But then you also look at Nigerians and see how we have been squeezed. Uh, what do you think of this to even start with? I think um, the news of um, the Dangote refinery uh, bringing down the prices of uh, gas, gas oil, uh, which is otherwise known as diesel, as well as other products that will be coming through in, uh, in due time, uh, I think it's a very positive news. Um, we're all in Nigeria. We all face the same inflationary headwinds, and we all are in Nigeria. Whatever it is you buy in Nigeria today, one way or the other, diesel is a, is a, is a factor. When you talk about the telecoms, for example, all the base stations are filled with diesel. So ideally, uh, now that we are bringing down the prices of uh, diesel, our expectation is that it will have an, a direct impact on every single item, household item that you have in Nigeria. Be it you're buying rice, whatever it is you're buying, one way or the other is transported with diesel. So therefore, if the prices of diesel is coming down, uh, and we're coming down from 1,650 or thereabouts, almost 60% reduction, which I think for me is a testament to w how having an industry within Nigeria has a direct correlation to ease of uh, life uh, for, for, for the generality of Nigerians. Uh, we are aware that the government is doing everything it can uh, to stem the tide of the hyperinflation we're seeing. And of course, in a sense, this is our own way of contributing to that uh, uh, so indeed, it's a very, very positive news. And Nigerians should expect uh, that we will continue to do our best to make sure that, uh, you know, prices uh, remain at a very, very reasonable levels. So should we tell the telecom operators to hold and uh, don't think of a tariff hike yet because we have Dangote Diesel coming to you at 1,000? Because it should. I know that uh, Mr. Aliko Dangote had promised or, I mean... Well, he did express his own optimism, uh, saying that with the drop in the price of diesel, we should see a drop in inflation. But I mean, the time lag is also another thing to consider. Agreed. But like I said, um, uh, what our group president has said, Elijah Aliko, is very right in that. Like I said, there's nothing we can go into details, but there's not a single part of the economy you can think of. If you run any business today, chances are you're using diesel. Uh, to run that business. If you are in uh, transporting any kind of items, even when you look at mass transportation, you still have uh, uh, diesel has an impact because it's only the last mile that uh, is being handled by petrol. But most of the activities you find, economic activities in Nigeria, are uh, one way or the other impacted by the price of uh, diesel. So if the price of diesel is coming down by 60%, then you would expect to see a commensurate reduction in the prices of goods and services. We're not used to seeing price reductions in Nigeria. And I think it's novel, it's something new, and uh, it's uh, something in the right direction, seeing that the, here is a company uh, which is starting and is also announcing a reduction uh, in the prices of, uh, of these commodities. Mm. So Nigerians would like to know how sustainable this will be because um, I hope we don't get used to 1,000 and then Dangote will come and say, oh, um, we're not making profit, we can't cover our head, overhead costs, and so we have to hike it by a bit. What, how, do, how, how are you working with this, you know, keeping up with your operational costs? Because as you noted, uh, Dangote is also operating in Nigeria, facing the headwinds that everybody's facing, yes. and yet you're able to reduce the price up to 1,000. So, number one, you have to remember that we have the single largest train uh, refinery anywhere in the world. Brand new refinery, which is very, very efficient, operating at the highest level of efficiency. Uh, number two, 
typically oil is sold in the international markets in dollars, where oil is not sold in Naira. Uh, and as such, we're also able to export some of what we are uh, producing. In fact, we started operations since February. Our first export was in February. And as we speak, in addition to the domestic fuels that we're selling, we're also exporting. So this uh, refinery is now an opportunity for Nigeria to also be able to become a net exporter. There's no reason for anybody to bring a single liter of any fuel into Nigeria when we have more than enough because the size of the refinery can adequately cater to the needs of Nigeria of all the product lines you can think of and even some West African countries. So it's, it's the opposite of importation. Now you have a chance to actually export, meaning that you will, you will already get some um, uh, forex inflow instead of the outflow. Um, there's no crystal ball to your question on, uh, on price. No, nothing remains constant. But uh, I mean, it's a testament to the fact that we are ready to do business and we're already selling at a price that is very, very competitive. And it has helped the whole economy to benefit from that uh, low price that we, are, we have announced. Mm, help us to understand the supply chain. Uh, we're interested in the domestic suppliers, how you work with them, um, you know, who are those you have already perhaps, how, um, do we know those who have already bought? I believe Dangote Diesel is already in circulation, yes. even as we speak. So help us to understand the supply chain, especially for the domestic buyers. So, you know, typically um, most of the fuel, uh, the diesel you find is imported into the country. So we have two sets of customers. We have customers who are buying uh, um, by truck and we're loading every day. And we have people who also are buying by vessel, those who already have their own storage facilities. So rather than come to buy by truck, they will come with a vessel and they will take in lots like that. So we are, in terms of value chain, we're we are open and uh, we're selling to every Nigerian that has the requisite uh, uh, licenses that you need to be able to operate in that space. And uh, it's an opportunity for, I would say, the smaller players to also participate. And everybody has a chance to, to, to be able to be part of that. And you also have a chance, like I said earlier, to export. Because again, that's for me where Nigeria moves from a net importer to a net exporter of the same commodity, meaning that people have a chance to, to, to become international traders instead of just playing locally. And this, of course, will boost our FX liquidity which is a uh, dire need at this time. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So, so we heard um, you're already doing diesel. Um, you're planning on jet fuel. We're already doing jet as well. Okay, you're also doing jet fuel. We're doing jet as well. We've been loading... To so the aviation sector. Yes, we're doing jet fuel already, and we have been loading cargoes of jet for a while now. Oh, wow, nice. What about petrol? That's, you know, that's where... <laughs> That's where the bulk of consumers are. Yes. When can we look forward to petrol from Dangote? In a couple of weeks. We are working weeks, you in, said. A, in a couple of weeks. We should be ready. Um, in a couple of weeks, we should be able to, to start to, to do some petrol. Mm. So a couple of weeks, that's in May. Well, uh, you know, uh, with things like this, it's uh, difficult to be exact in terms of timing because, again, you're starting up uh, a facility. So I don't want to give you a, a specific date. Uh, but certainly, I would say a couple of weeks, not more than that. And, and when I say a couple of weeks, I don't mean 20 weeks. I mean a couple of so weeks. So before the end of May, we would expect that Dangote Petro, a couple of weeks is, you know, will be in May and all of that. Yes, before so the end of uh, I would say, I would say if you're talking like that, I would say in Q2, rather than to be specific with a I'll with just a let you go because already in Q2. <laughs> yes. well, so how, what impacts, I mean, do we expect um, we have been told that Dangote is exporting crude. Mm -hmm. So we know to manage our expectation because obviously he's not importing crude uh, with Naira. He's importing with dollars. So we expect yes. that to feed in. So what can Nigerians expect as we await the supply of petrol from Dangote? I think the first thing about um, fuels or, or any, any product is, for me, is energy security. What the Dangote refinery brings, the first, uh, I would say, big advantage is that you have energy security. Because what happens is when you have to bring in cargoes, there are times when you fall short uh, or you have the cargoes in tank, but the distribution is clogged up. And what happens when you have that is that you then have shortages uh, at different locations. 
What Angote Refinery brings is, is the security because two things, you can load a lot of vessels, you can also do a lot of trucks. And these trucks are not going to be coming back into Lagos to come and uh, you know create uh, further uh, traffic because what happens is today, look at a papa. Imagine you take out the fueling or the trucking that happens there or 50% of it moves to the refinery. What that means is that those who come to load from the refinery are able to take the route through Ogun State. They don't need to come into Lagos at all. So that kind of reduces the traffic and at the same time, it improves the efficiency of the product getting to the end user. That's to me the first one. Number two, uh, you also talked about the uh, the pricing. The pricing, I can't talk about the pricing right now because again, it has to be agreed and finalized. But certainly, you will get an availability of the product at uh, reasonably, uh, you know, reasonably uh, good levels in terms of uh, pricing because it's produced here rather than being brought in from uh, from abroad. Yeah, well, um, I, I know that uh, financial derivatives, they did do like a study and said that uh, about 20% of logistics costs will be cut out. So, I mean, that's, that should also attract even more players in the industry. And as you said, it should feed more into the issue of energy uh, security in, in, in the country. I pray that the long queues at the filling stations will be a thing of the past in no certainly. distant time. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. All right. We have to thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. Director, Group Chief Commercial Officer with Dan Gote, Mr. Rabi Umar. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here.